Well, most of you know what's been going on up at the Northwest Angle. You may have saw the Prairie Sportsman episode about the the Northwest Angle guest ice road that was new this year and how that worked and just what's been going on up there. It seems to change all the time. Uh, the Canadian border situation is very fluid. Is it is it going to be open? Is it uh, kind of open? Is it going to open up? Is it what's happening? And in February, there were some changes up there again that affected uh, people up at the Northwest Angle. Joe Henry is going to join us right now from Lake of the Woods Tourism to talk a little bit about some of the changes that took place recently. Joe, how's it going? Uh, good, Brett. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Good. Thanks for coming on to uh, to talk about this. I didn't hear these changes, so I wasn't really aware what uh, what had what had taken place. Because now it's a little bit because uh, people that that lived at the angle or had resorts, owned resorts, they were able to actually cross the border and come down into War Road or the United States to go grocery shopping, get supplies, right? But that's that's not the case anymore. Yeah, the the rules have changed a little bit here. So he, here's what happened. So for 13 months. Our residents of the Northwest Angle, which between 110 and 120 people, residents of the Northwest Angle were able to come down to either Warro or Rozo and get their essential services, uh, their health care and their groceries. And they, they were allowed to, to, to freely do that. Well, then all of a sudden, just recently, the rules have changed. And it's my understanding that they came up with more specific guidelines for the COVID testing, which in turn changed the rules. So after 13 months, Residents of the Angle were, were allowed to go back and forth across that desolate 40 miles of Manitoba to get their groceries and health care. And all of a sudden, just like that, they're not allowed to. So now they're being turned away when they try to go home. And what's even, even more ironic is that they're being told that they have to have, you know, a, a COVID test, but they can't use a rapid test. They have to use the other test that takes longer. And... They have to have a test within, it has to be valid within three days of when they took it. However, when you get a test like that up in the North Country, it's taking an average of four days to get your results. So that number one, you know, after 13 months, it doesn't make sense. And now you're going to make people take a test and wait four days to go back, but four days won't even do it for them. So then on top of it, the, the other confusion is our Northwest Angle residents are being told that if you need either health care and or groceries to go in Canada to get those things. Well, if you're leaving the Northwest Angle and you're entering Manitoba, you're not gonna have a COVID test along that road. So you'd be entering Canada. If you're infected, you're infected, that's one thing. And the other thing that's ironic is that, you know, Canada has their own healthcare system. So Americans aren't allowed to get healthcare there. So the whole thing is just very confusing. And it's also very, very troubling that, you know, for 13 months, we've had Canada dictating our tourists cannot travel up there over this 40-mile desolate road. But now on top of that, they're, they're making it so our residents can no longer go get their, their essentials. So the whole thing is getting quite, uh, quite frustrating, quite frankly. And this actually affects uh, all the exclaves, right? There, it wasn't just the angle. It was affecting some of the other locations. What? what? Well, actually, there, there, there are um, three exclaves of the United States in, in Canada. Three of them are United States, one is Canadian. And so there's, uh, so Hyder, Alaska and the Northwest Angle are non-exempt. However, Point Roberts in Washington State, they got exempted from this. So really? it's, even, it's even a little bit more, you know, kind of, I don't know if it's called troubling or whatever the case might be, but, you know, it just doesn't make sense. And, uh, so there's a lot of a lot of information that's floating around, and uh, and I should tell you too that you know we had the opportunity. We are getting support from uh, you, you know uh, Congresswoman Fishbach and, and Congressman Stauber, Paul Colson of Jake's Northwest Angle Resort, and myself were, uh, uh, were were present at a meeting last week in International Falls about the northern border, and we've been getting a lot of you know support from the, the Congress people as well as you know. Uh, Senator Klobuchar and Senator Smith, and, uh, and everybody's been very supportive. They've been sending letters to their Canadian counterparts, to the Secretary of State of the United States. Uh, but so far, we're in this predicament, and nothing's been changed. So we're kind of in a dilemma right now. How was Point Point Roberts? Is that what you said? How was how did yeah. they end up being exempt from this? Well, you know, we we have uh, uh, we have some of our. Uh, um, our federal delegates looking into that and looking into how we can also be exempt on that same list. We, we have no idea. 
and uh, this is all kind of news to us. Uh, like I said, we were uh, we were going our, our residents were going back and forth freely for their essentials for 13 months, and now all of a sudden, you, you know, as uh, vaccination rates are going up in the United States and things are getting better, you know, we're getting closed down more and more. So did they when the Canadian government did this? Was there an announcement about it, or were there people from the angle that just showed up at the border and got turned around and didn't know what was going on? There, there, were, there were people at the border that all of a sudden got surprised that no, you no longer can go across, and here are the new rules. So, of course, I called Canada Border Service Agency and, and got the, uh, the CBSA and got the, uh, the reason for it. And, uh, you know, it's because of the, the new guidelines that came out for COVID testing before you come back into Canada. You know, it, it, it just, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to us. Um, we, we have no problem with people being careful, but, you know, we, we have Canadian vehicles running all over the angle for, uh, for a municipal, municipal project going on up in Canada. And, you know, yet our residents, which were allowed to, to pass through to get their essentials for 13 months, all of a sudden, now that things are getting better, are cut off. So it's really quite bewildering. We've got Paul Colson with us as well here. I'm going to bring Paul onto the show. Uh, Paul, thanks for coming on with us today. I appreciate it. Yep. Did you, how did you learn about this? Did you try getting to the border? Were you turned around or how did you learn about this? I learned about it because I, I took a trip after we got done ice fishing with my wife. We went out west, visited some relatives, and I kept hearing on my phone from the from people back here that, hey, things have changed. Things are different, right? And actually, I had shut off my phone for a couple of days there because I just needed to get away from everything for a while. And so then, okay, so I start kind of reengaging with it. And then I'm, I'm hearing different things. Okay, you can, if you cross at this port, it's not too bad. If you cross at this port, don't go to there. Um, very conflicting things. Don't have any real clear rules. So we got back here, my wife and I, and we cleared through Canada Customs and got home. And so I thought, okay, they're probably, it didn't seem like, I didn't have a problem. We didn't have a problem returning home. And even though we were gone for 15 days, something like that. And so I'm thinking, all right, well, maybe I'm not sure what's going on here. So we, um, that afternoon, I called, I called Canada Customs up. They have a COVID inquiry line. So I called them up and I said, hey, you know, is the Northwest Angle an exemption for this negative COVID test? And they said, uh, you know, no, no, it's not. And then they got, oh, no, here it is on my cheat sheet. Yeah. You, Point Roberts, Campobello Island, New Brunswick, you're exempt from negative COVID testing. So I put, okay, good. So then I pushed it out to everybody, look, no problem. We won't have any problem. So that was on Thursday. Come Sunday, some people that have been living up here, they have a resort down the road. They're 70 years old. They're coming back from their trip they had down south. They tell the truth because Canada Customs said, don't worry, don't negative COVID test, no negative COVID test necessary. This is the molecular one, again. Um, they came to Canada Customs and they were turned around because they said we were just on a trip down south. So they got turned around. Uh, another gal who grew up here, she's about 20 years old. This is her residence still on her driver's license. She was turned around. Um, people were getting turned around. So then I called Canada Customs up and gave, you know said, what's the deal? And yeah, essentially exactly what, what was reiterated here earlier. If you're not... Um, going for work, commercial transportation, habitual education, or accessing emergency services in the U.S., you need a negative COVID test. They don't tell us any of this stuff, okay? This is, I have to ask them. You actually have to inquire, what are the new rules that you're impressing upon me now? And that's, that's what I was told. So in the same conversation, I was told that, yeah, if you're going to get you can go do your regular medical stuff in Canada and get your other essentials like um, groceries, hardware for the business. If I can go get materials in, in Canada for my, for my resort, can't do it for personal reasons, but for the business reasons you can. So, yeah. So that's what I'm going to be doing now is going to Canada to get my groceries. So I, I'd assume this is Canada just trying to restrict more travel into 
their country from the United States, and it just happens to affect you guys even more than the previous restrictions, correct? This wasn't aimed at, was it, this wasn't necessarily aimed at the exclaves. It was just a new border rule, right? Border regulation. Well, trying to think about your question there, um, aimed at restricting travel actually it forces me into Canada is what it does. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't know what their intent was. I mean, I would love to know what their intent is because there's no logic in this. You know, because our local, our local Canadian customs port told them, and when I say them, I mean uh, PHAC. It's uh, it, Public Health Agency of Canada. That's what PHAC stands for. So when they saw these proposed rule changes coming down the line, our local office, Canadian office in Sprague, Manitoba, got a hold of PHAC and said, look, this is a problem. And they told them that for 10 days and still PHAC said, no, apparently this is what we're going with. So we're lumped in and this gets totally crazy, but a good geography lesson. So we are lumped in with Hyder, Alaska. Now Hyder, Alaska is on the panhandle of Alaska. They are pushed right up against mountains and Stewart, British Columbia. So it makes sense for those Hyder, Alaska people to just go a mile and get their stuff in Stewart, British Columbia. If they were going to go to their nearest U.S. towns, it's like 900 miles. Two occasions in the last two days to try to, to try to square what I've been told by Canada Customs. I am going to go to Steinbach, Manitoba tomorrow and go grocery shopping with a CBC television crew. That's my plan for tomorrow just to try to show people how truly off the rails this logic really is. How, so you would normally go. <laughs> careful. <don't>, <laughs> careful. <laughs> you, you know, get, getting the groceries. So how, okay. So let me ask you this question. How far is Steinbeck? How far of a drive is that for you? It's a hundred miles. One uh, way. hundred miles. One way. How far would it be to drive to war road? 65, 65 one way. Miles. So it, you have to drive further into, into Canada, essentially, to go to the grocery store now. Be around Canada. Oh, and, and mix with way more people. Yeah. I would not see anybody on that road driving to town. I mean, it's, it's, it's good hunting territory. Let's put it that way. Um, I'll go buy all sorts of stuff tomorrow and, and mix with all sorts of people. Hmm. How does that? And they... I'm sorry for talking over you, but, You're and fine. they don't even ask if you've been vaccinated. That never even comes up in the questions. Hmm. Well, I, I'm real curious about the healthcare situation. Like, like so, so if you need to go to a hospital, you're supposed to go to one in, in Canada. Yeah. As long as it's not in a, in a, if it's an emergency, I can go to the U S if, if I apparently go to the dentist or just a regular physical or a checkup or anything that you'd go to the hospital for, I have been instructed by PHAC to acquire it in Canada. So as an American, so in Manitoba, they have a public, public health insurance card. Everybody's issued one of these when you're born, right? It's like our social security number, same thing for Manitobans, okay? So this number runs with you your whole life. So if you, as a Manitoban, you would go to the hospital, present your Manitoba pub, public insurance card, and that's your, that's who you are, okay? Now, as an American, um, not really sure how that's going to work. Not really sure how my insurance company would take that. But if I go to the United States to do that, I need a negative molecular COVID test hmm. to return home. Have, have they given you any other sort of answers as in how long this might go on for, or is this a, a, is a change every 30 days or is this, I mean, I, I've heard rumors that maybe by July, maybe things will open up a little bit more. Have you heard, have you guys heard anything like that at all? Go ahead, Joe. Nobody really knows. Yeah, nobody knows. We we, we hear stuff, but we've been hearing stuff. Uh, you know, we, we never thought this would last into the winter, yeah. you know. Uh, so it, it goes month to month. Um, 
you know, it, it, it makes it really, really hard to plan. It makes it really hard to keep reservations because these resorts have reservations on the books. And as time goes further and further, people are getting nervous. They call and say, hey, is the border going to be open? You know what? No, no, no disrespect, but the border is not going to be open. We do want to go on vacation. So they, they switch the reservation. So as time goes on, we lose reservations. You know, early on when this happened, Brett, naturally what people would do is say, okay, the border, the, the, the Canadian border is shut for 30 days. So I'm going to take all my reservations in that 30 days and push them to the next month or the next month and a half and then fill in spots where I have openings. And that kept happening. And pretty soon it, it just didn't work anymore. So we're stuck in a, conundrum that we don't know when the border is going to be open. We don't have a date. We don't have criteria. Even if they would say, all right, for the border to open, we have to have a vaccination rate of this, or we have to have numbers down to this. I mean, we have, there's no, nobody knows. Nobody knows what the the target is. I would also say that in the North, in our case, our geographical exclave case, we're not looking for the border to be open. We're just looking for a little tr- skinny travel corridor to drive down. And you got to remember, I mean, 22 miles, this is gravel. This is, this is really remote, remote area. Um, I take calls every day from clients, potential clients, asking me you know, if I have any insight as far as customs. And, and I, I don't have any. You know, actually, in the, in the honesty is it's gotten worse here the last two weeks. It hasn't gotten better. And, you know, and, and I, it's, it's super frustrating because, I mean, as the United States, is, we're actually giving vaccine to Canada. And, I mean, their train runs through our country every day without stopping at customs. I mean, it, it's all one-sided. Canada is getting exactly what they want out of this relationship. They're getting everything they want. Um, they're just not being, they are not being very good neighbors. I can tell you that flat out. Well, Brett, I'll, I'll just say this, you know, it, it, uh, so it started out where, for 13 months, these Northwest Angle resorts, their businesses have been in peril. And of course, if it wasn't for them risking everything and putting in that ice road for, for the resorts that do winter fishing, you know what? They wouldn't have had a winter business. So they sacrificed at least a percentage of the winter business. And I know you were on the ice road, you know all about it. And, you know, um, but now we're back to square one. So now it's not just messing up the business part of it, but now they're messing with them being able to drive back and forth for essentials and just get home. So, you know, it used to be they're messing with their businesses. Now they're messing with businesses and just their integrity of who they are as people. These are American citizens. And, and, and quite frankly, with all due respect, Canada is dictating what, what they can and cannot do and where they can and cannot go. So you've got a line of communication open with some elected officials here in the United States. Who are they? Do they have counterparts in Canada that they can reach out to or, you know, what's the next step here to try to help the situation out? Well, um, yes. I mean, our, our, I am, and Joe is in contact daily with um, Fishbox office, with Klobuchar's office and with Smith's office every single day. And trying to trying to give them real life examples of what's going on, up to date information. Um, what's it's it's there is. I wish some agency would take the lead on providing up to date, accurate information, and not having to have uh, people like myself. Um, I'm I'm into this neck deep, and I've got probably more current information than everybody. Uh, Joe and Her- Joe Henry and I we talk to each other all the time. You know, trying to keep each other you know, current and people pivot to us to try to get constant, correct information. You have to understand that people are intimidated to rock the boat, especially with Canada customs, because this is an agency that has a, that can lord a lot of power over you. And as we go for, as we move into the future, you're worried about maybe negative repercussions if you rock the boat or squawk too much or complain or whatever, right? So people are a little nervous about getting uppity. But they're going to get uppity because they're going to lose their business. So, you know, we're, I will say that I'm in really good communication with with all of our elected officials from 
the state and the feds. I mean, I have a better, rela- like I told one guy, I don't want to know you this well. You know, I, it's all the time we're talking about things. And I just want to run a business just like everybody else. I'm in the U.S. This shouldn't be this difficult. And like I told that same aide, I'm 50 years old now, and I have had the State Department get involved on my behalf on three separate occasions so far. And that's just to live and have a business at the Northwest Angle. And that is crazy, crazy, right? It shouldn't be this hard. Well, you're going to go to the grocery store. You're going to bring a a film crew, news crew with you. Um, Yep. (laughs) How do you think that's going to go? Oh, it'll go fine. I mean, I'll, I'll be legal. I'm going to, I'm going to leave a little note on my door of the, of the car telling the RCMP because I'm going to have a Manitoba, I'm going to have a Minnesota plate in Manitoba. It might get reported. People might freak out a little bit. I'm sure. Um, yeah, I can tell you this, that my local port in Sprague, Manitoba, uh, the customs there is very frustrated. They'd like to see this resolved. And so I told them, I, I, I'm telling them what I'm doing. And, and I'm going to have their number right on that mm-hmm. note. And I'm not really worried about any legal ramifications because I'm, I'm covering all my bases here. What I hope to show is just the level of, there's no other word for it, stupidity that this has taken on. I mean, it's, how, how can it be, how can it be less dangerous for the citizens of Canada for me to go get groceries with them than it would be for me to drive without contacting them? The logic doesn't square. And that's actually one hard part about this whole thing is what I'm trying to describe it to people because they just keep letting logic sneak into their thought processes. And it's like, no, 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 no. Don't go with logic. This does not make sense. So were you given some sort of geographical boundary of where you can travel in Canada <laughs> yeah. or, or could yeah, you go to yeah. Toronto if you wanted to? Um, wherever it is that I'm going to gain the essentials of life. So I, I, I think my wife, she's Canadian. She's had the same um, doctor since she's been in college now for over 30 years. I think she could go have a, a checkup with her. Um, I think I could get some business done, like for my, for my equipment, for my resort, stuff like that. I think if it's stuff that I've done before, I think I could do that. I think I could continue to do that. They haven't given me like a little dotted line in the sand. I don't know how far I could push that. Like, you know, can I, can I go get something done in Dauphin, Manitoba, where my uh, wife's family's from or lives today? I don't know how far I could push that. I haven't actually mm-hmm. looked at that. Well, it's another another twist in the uh, the border saga. Uh, it's a tough situation, obviously, and hopefully, I mean, we've been saying this for a long time, Joe. Hopefully, things get straightened out here soon. And I didn't expect it to go the other direction quite yet because I've been uh, I've been on the actually today. I spent about an hour on the phone with with friends of mine in Saskatchewan trying to figure out uh, how this summer is going to go and hoping to get up hoping to get up there to do some stuff. So um, I, I, I wish you well, good luck at the grocery store. Paul. <laughs> I'm anxious yeah. to hear how that, how that's going to go and um, you know, keep us updated on any other changes that come your way. Yeah. It's, it's there. Ha- it has to, it, it can't get much worse. I mean, I'd have to scratch my head, you know, and just think, how could they make it worse? I guess they could shut the electricity off because our power comes from Manitoba Hydro. I guess they could do that. that that's about it. Oh boy. Yeah, Brett, it's, it's interesting too because, you know, uh, some of the people down at, uh, you know, Canada Border Services Agency are very, very good people. They're following the rules. Mm-hmm. And, then, you know, the, the, the residents at the Northwest Angle, they get to know these people quite well and they, they don't want it to be this way. They just have to. So it's, it's not – it's a very, a very interesting situation. I think the the rules are probably Paul. Tell me if you agree. The rules are being dictated from you know Ottawa and places Ottawa. far, far away. And it's Ottawa. it's it's public health Canada that's dictating these rules. In fact, it's our understanding that every time somebody comes across the border, there's a phone call made to Public Health Canada to decipher what should be done with this individual vehicle and the travelers within it. Each yeah. time. Each time. Each time. Wow. Each time. So it, it like I'll call 
Canada Border Services Agency. Technically, it's a, it's a call center in Hamilton, Ontario. So then they'll say, they'll ask me where I would be crossing at, if it'd be Warroad or Roseau. Then they put me on hold. They call that port. Technically, it's called South Junction, Junction or Sprague. Then that port calls PHAC. If it's during business hours or regular hours, they call Emerson, Manitoba. And if it's later than that, then they call somebody out east like in Ottawa, right? So then so then the PHAC person communicates to the CBSA customs person who communicates back to the call center Hamilton, who then comes back to me who's on hold to see if I can go. That's what happens every time we cross a line. So every so, every vehicle, in essence, every vehicle that comes across, whether you're calling, you're up at the Northwest Angle, and you have to make a phone call and call Canada Border Services Agency to go down to Warroad or Rozo, that's one option. And the other one would be coming from Warroad or Rozo, heading north to go to the Angle. When you stopped at that CBSA station there, they also contact Public Health Canada. So the, Public Health Canada is pulling the pulling the strings here, and I don't yeah. know if it's a situation where they just don't understand our geography or our area. But uh, something's really been messed up, and you know we, we actually thought something would be fixed by now. It's been a, a number of days with a number of uh, letters written and everything else by our, our federal delegates. I, I it's kind of a head scratcher, quite frankly. I mean, do you think it's just a matter of their like the angle just isn't even on their radar? Like it's it's they're not we're even... on their radar. We're on their yeah, radar. We, Don't we are no. we are now for sure. I mean, I, you know, our. our our senators and our and our Congress people have been writing letters and making phone calls, and this has been ongoing. This isn't just recent, but certainly recently as well because of this new information. I know that Sprague Customs repeatedly contacted them, repeatedly mm -hmm. saying this this doesn't work here. This might work for Hyder, Alaska. This is not going to work for the angle. I know they did that for ten days, and Public Health and PHAC just said, ah, whatever, we're going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So here we are. Well, uh, I hope you don't get sick anytime soon, you know, yeah, yeah. I don't want to make jokes about this right now, but if you got, you know, not sure how the health situation is going to go, Brett, you know, going to Canada, Brett, if you're not Brett, if you're not laughing, you're going to be crying. Yeah, you have yeah. to laugh. That's right. You do. Well, uh, guys, good luck. Good luck up, up there at the angle. Um, appreciate the update and, uh, keep us updated on any other changes and I, good luck at the grocery store. <laughs> you bet thank you <laughs> hey anglers looking for a destination where walleyes fresh air and fish fries are a way of life look no further than the famous waters of lake of the woods from badette and the rainy river to the main lake up to the northwest angle here you'll enjoy the best walleye catch rate in the state maybe you'll pursue world-class sturgeon pike or muskie plus you'll find lots of full service resorts offering charter boats delicious meals and lots of minnesota nice come experience the walleye capital of the world come experience lake of the woods catch the details at lakeofthewoodsmn.com.